Namaskar. I express my gratitude to the Indian Mission for hosting my talk on the 153rd birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi during the celebration of the 75th year of India's independence. I am thankful to the Ministry of External Affairs, the Government of India, the Indian Council for Cultural Relations, and the Indian Mission for their support. The world is celebrating the UN International Day of Nonviolence on 2nd October and remembering Mahatma Gandhi, the apostle of peace and nonviolence. We have an opportunity to remind the humanity of the efficacy of the messages and the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhiji's leadership and the power of peace, nonviolence, and living in harmony with nature showed by him is capable of shaking the souls of human beings to bring about a transformation in their lives by cutting through the boundaries of international borders, space, and time. He is the leader of India with global visibility and the world judges us by his standards. Mahatma Gandhi was a multifaceted personality. His simplicity of life and his single-minded quest for truth and nonviolence concealed innumerable streams of ideas, disciplines, devotions, and aspirations. Gandhiji was a saint and a revolutionary, a politician and a reformer, an economist and a spiritual person, a person who was moral and a perfectionist, an educationist, a satyagrahi devoted to faith and reason, a man of action and a remarkable visionary. He was an excellent negotiator, a reconciler, and a peacemaker who worked to bring about a compromise in all the situations he faced. Gandhiji loved everyone deeply and accepted wholeheartedly that truth can reside in opposites as well. The Indian Nobel laureate poet Rabindranath Tagore had said about Gandhiji that occasionally there appear in the area of politics, maker of history, whose mental height is above the common level of humanity. They wield an instrument of power, which is almost physical in its compelling force and often relentless. When Mahatma Gandhi came and opened the path of freedom for India, he had no obvious medium of power in his hands, no overwhelming authority of coercion. The influence which emerged from his personality was ineffable, like music and like beauty. It claimed up on others so greatly because of its revelations of a spontaneous self-giving force. His spiritual inspirations comprehend and yet transcends all varied manifestations of humanity and makes the face of worldliness turn to the light that comes from that eternal source of wisdom. Mahatma Gandhi's life was a constant narrative of an endeavor in which he added to his reputation, concluding with the evolving inclusiveness of his personality. There was nothing mystic or miraculous about his development and growth. From an ordinary person into a Mahatma, it is open to each one of us to see how he advanced one step at a time, experimenting with truth and nonviolence and piecing them together in his life, ready to look at truths, understand their implications, face hardest consequences in the pursuit of a cause, suffer any price for a mistake, recover lost ground again, but always progressing, open-minded and fearless. He dedicated himself selflessly to reach and hold the truth of a matter at any cost. This is the way he grew into a Mahatma. He was an ordinary person who transformed himself up to the most extraordinary heights. The greatness of Mahatma Gandhi lies more in his spirituality, in his insistence on the inspired strength of the soul and its life-giving qualities at a time when the devastating force seemed in full force. Mahatma Gandhi had spared no pain in disciplining himself to the utmost possible extent. Experimentation was one of the innermost desires of Gandhiji's life. He experimented with food and dietetics, health and nature cure, clothes and attire, politics and economics, education and reforms, revolution, ethics and spirituality. 
with almost everything that his life knew as part of life. With relentless logic and faith, he charted new ground in every direction and yet had the depth of mind to separate defeat from triumph, the dishonest from the real, and to integrate all his aims and achievements into the harmony of his personality. Gandhiji's own life story is about action to bring about definite transformations. He both succeeded and failed in what he sought to do, but he always moved forward. And he never gave up the quest for improvement, both social and spiritual, and both for individuals and for the nation as a whole. Today, Gandhiji is remembered not only as a political leader, but as a moralist who appealed to the universal conscience of humankind. He changed the world, and the impact is seen by the world leaders who were inspired by him and have taken a leap from Gandhiji's life and work to fashion their initiatives for ensuring peace, justice, and fighting against discrimination. Renowned scientist Dr. Albert Einstein has written about Mahatma Gandhi, and I quote, Gandhi is unique in political history. He has invented an entirely new and human technique for the liberation struggle of an oppressed people and carried it out with the greatest energy and devotion. A leader of his people, unsupported by any outward authority, a man of wisdom and humility who devoted his whole life to uplift his people. He confronted the brutality of Europe with the dignity of a simple human being and has always risen superior. We are fortunate and should be grateful that fate has bestowed upon us so luminous a contemporary, a beacon to the generations to come. Mahatma Gandhi is widely recognized as one of the 20th century's greatest political and spiritual leaders. Few men have ever had as much of an impact on our world as Mahatma Gandhi. He was charismatic, thoughtful, and analytical. Gandhiji was very much a product of his time, yet one of his greatest sources of inspiration was the Bhagavad Gita, the sacred Indian scripture, which teaches us to lead a life of selflessness, non-attachment, and non-possession. And Gandhiji lived according to the central messages of the Bhagavad Gita. He derived tremendous pleasure from the activities he engaged in, whether it was writing and editing his newspapers, books, spinning the charkha, engaging in manual labor, walking long distance, imprisonment, and so on. He immensely enjoyed what he was doing. Whatever he did, he was fully present to the task at hand. In fact, the path became the goal. In Mahatma Gandhi's words, and I quote, satisfaction lies in the effort, not in the attainment. Full effort is full victory, unquote. Gandhiji's moral leadership accomplished what they thought to be impossible by many. According to Paralal Nayar, Gandhiji's private secretary for a long time, what made Mahatma Gandhi almost unique among leaders of men was his capacity to harmonize widely different points of view so that they became contributory to the examination of the common goal. An outstanding instance of this was the way in which he dealt with his colleagues who differed from him. While holding to his own principle, he allowed his colleagues full scope to serve the country according to, to their light. Because of this, not only the most intimate relations continued between them, but also those who differed from him ultimately came around and worked under his leadership. The central core of Gandhiji's teaching was meant for all humankind and is valid for all times. Gandhiji wanted all men to be free so that they would grow unhampered into full self-realization. He wanted to abolish the exploitation of man by man in any form because both exploitation and submission to it are a sin against the law of our being. He had been invited by numerous foreigners to visit their countries and deliver his message to them directly. But Gandhiji had declined. He said, that he must make good what he claimed for truth and non-violence in his own country before he could launch on 
the gigantic task of converting the world with the attainment of freedom by india by following gandhiji's method of non violent resistance or satyagraha despite all the imperfections in its practice the condition precedent for taking his message to other countries was to a certain extent fulfilled gandhiji's legacy to humanity is fighting against injustice by non violent means using love force truth force and soul force and he termed it as satyagraha it aimed to change the hearts of the adversaries through self suffering and sacrifice in the non violent resistance and civil disobedience according to mahatma gandhi anybody can adopt satyagraha satyagraha has also been considered for resisting any kind of oppression gandhi ji regarded satyagraha as a way of life during the freedom struggle of india satyagraha was used as a weapon to challenge the power of the state and to achieve success for the general welfare of the people conflicts are bound to arise in human societies as each person group or nation can perceive only once or its own relative truth we must fight against what we perceive as untruth injustice exploitation and repression gandhi ji evolved the concept and technique of non violent civil resistance to all such evils he gave the name satyagraha or holding firmly to truth to all such non violent resistance truth non violence purity of means sacrifice and self suffering are its basic principles the central concept in mahatma gandhi's philosophy of satyagraha is broadly based on non violence defined most narrowly it is a technique or tool of non violent action a satyagraha campaign is undertaken only after all other peaceful means have proven ineffective at its heart is non violence an attempt is made to convert persuade or win over the opponent it involves applying the forces of both reason and conscience simultaneously while holding aloft the indisputable truth of his or her position the satyagrahi or the one who practices satyagraha also engages in acts of voluntary self suffering any violence inflicted by the opponent is accepted without retaliation but precisely because there is no retaliation the opponent can only become morally bankrupt if violence continues to be inflicted indefinitely gandhi ji gave this innovative method that was to be a substitute for violence the intention was to bring about positive societal and dogmatic changes it would do as well to remind ourselves of what gandhi ji proposed for the world he spoke of a world that would evolve towards peace and harmony in this world different religions cultures and people of the world would live together with mutual respect and tolerance rather than in suspicion and hatred satyagraha is the extension of the rule of family life to the other spheres of human interaction family disputes and differences are commonly settled through the law of love and accommodation and a constant effort for the promotion of family welfare it was the application of the law of domestic life the law of love for all to the, the whole of humanity which gandhi ji had come to regard as his own family our ancient wisdom tradition teaches us that the world is one family vasudhaiva kutumbakam gandhi ji laid down rules of moral discipline for the satyagrahi a satyagrahi must have an unshakable faith in god he should be able to calmly bear the physical brutality is unleashed by the authorities he must not crave after wealth and fame and should be totally fearless and strong in his determination he must have patience single minded purposefulness and must not leave the path of duty by anger or any other desire satyagraha can never be resorted to for personal gains as the appeal is to the heart and not to the sense of fear of the wrong doer the satyagraha is based on personal purification mahatma gandhi's insistence on purity of means by way of spiritualization of politics is a great contribution to humanity as it is essential to employ pure means 
for serving a righteous cause. Satyagraha always starts as an attempt to understand the opponent's point of view. And if the conflict is not resolved through dialogue, mediation and compromise, then various forms of non-cooperation and in the political field, even civil disobedience may be adopted. One must never obey a law against one's conscience. But a satyagrahi also never really breaks a law because he or she openly defies the law and welcomes maximum punishment under the law for such disobedience. Gandhiji saw the spirit of compromise as an essential part of satyagraha. A satyagrahi must show willing obedience to the laws of the state. Mahatma Gandhi wrote, and I quote, a satyagrahi obeys the laws of the society intelligently and of his own free will because he considers it to be his sacred duty to do so. It is only when a person has thus obeyed the laws of society scrupulously that he is in a position to judge as to which particular rules are good and just and which are unjust and iniquitous and only then does the right accrue to him of the civil disobedience of certain laws in well-defined circumstances? Gandhiji claimed to have been by nature a law-abiding person. As Gandhiji has shown in his pursuit of Satyagraha from 1906 till his end, its aftermath is always a better relationship among the parties. In a violent resistance, the opposite is the result. Gandhiji's earliest satyagraha in India was in Champaran in Bihar during 1917, where he adopted the approach of civil disobedience, which gave the lesson in fearlessness and a direction to peasants, youth, and India's freedom struggle. This was followed by the Kheda and Bardoli satyagraha, settlement of mill owners and labor dispute in Gujarat from 1918 onwards. These satyagrahas gave the lesson that it could be used in virtually any situation of dispute, equally by literates and illiterates. In 1919, Gandhiji led the role at Satyagraha that established him as the leader of immense potential. Gandhiji went on to lead various other major Satyagraha against the British rule through the non-cooperation movement of the 1920s, the civil disobedience movement of 1930s, of which the Sol Satyagraha was a defining moment in India's independence and the Quit India movement of 1942, which was a landmark in Indian freedom struggle. Gandhiji had said that nonviolence is the greatest force at the disposal of humanity. He showed that peace can be assured only through nonviolence, tolerance, compassion, and understanding in our thought, word, and deed. Mahatma Gandhi's concept of non-violence and satyagraha is more than relevant today when we are collectively encountering the multifarious challenges of mindless violence and unlimited greed. The name of Mahatma Gandhi transcends the bounds of religion, race and nation states and has emerged as the prophetic voice of the 21st century. The world remembers Mahatma Gandhi not just for his practice of non-violence and satyata, but as a standard against which we test ourselves in personal, political, and social life. Mahatma Gandhi was one of the few leaders who remains an inspiration for millions and whose impact is palpable globally as the most critical change maker the world has seen. The world was to be more just, more tolerant, better, and more humane. The legacy of Mahatma Gandhi will endure for generations to come. He motivated people to be themselves and live a life of truth and simplicity. He also inspired them to believe in their country and its culture. Gandhiji mastered the elements of personal leadership. He lived by his convictions and never awaited others to take the first step, but lived the way so that others could follow. As we celebrate the anniversary of 75 years of Indian independence, we remember Mahatma Gandhi and all other freedom fighters gratefully who provided an outline to free India from the British rule and to rebuild the country. India's freedom movement led by Mahatma Gandhi was based on his philosophy of universal peace, truth, 
non violence, compassion, satyagraha, and sarvode, the welfare of all. And he strive to restore the Indian spirit for human dignity. Gandhiji has been a pioneer demonstrating this more peaceful method, which is so very effective. Today, the world gazes across him with unenviable gratitude. With resilience and resolve, Gandhiji carried forward the torch of our great nation's guiding philosophy, which has been the underlying message of the Rig Vedic verses. And I quote, Ekam sat vipraha baudha vadanti, meaning truth is one, but the learned call it by many names. Gandhian humanism and its practical application are the way forward in the world. His noble spirit and warm, humane kindness have endeared him to all humanitarians throughout the world. I express my thanks to the Indian Mission for hosting today's talk as part of India at 75 celebration. My special thanks are to the Indian Council for Cultural Relations for facilitating this event. I am grateful to all of you who have joined today. I will end with the peace benediction in Sanskrit for the universal welfare. Sarve sham swastir bhavatu. Sarve sham shantir bhavatu. Sarve sham purnam bhavatu. Sarve sham mangalam bhavatu. Om shanti shanti shanti. May all be endowed with prosperity. May all be blessed with peace. May all be blessed with perfection. May all be blessed with bliss. Om, peace, peace, peace. Namaskar.